Hi guys, Chris with Microsoft here with another exciting episode of What's New in Windows Server 2012. Uh, tonight continuing a discussion on uh, storage. So we're going to go into file and storage services and we're going we're to talk a little bit about iSCSI. So iSCSI is a block level storage mechanism. Um, and we're going to specifically be talking about the target. Uh, actually, we'll probably talk a little bit about the targets and the initiators. So this is a way of sharing out storage over the network, but it's different than SMB. So if, if we do a UNC path name and go, um, you know, Windows key R here, and I go whack whack, and, and we'll go Contoso MS1, and then like C dollar shine. So obviously this is similar to, uh, you know, this is, this is storage across, uh, across a network share, uh, or a network. But it doesn't actually appear in, uh, in, inside of the, uh, uh, the disk management section. In other words, it's not true block level storage. What I mean by that also is, uh, so if I hop over here to MS1, the, uh, the server that we're currently looking at uh, across the network, I could take a, uh, folder and do like we've always done and share this thing out. So sharing, advanced sharing, turn on sharing for this folder, click OK, click close. And then, hey, lo and behold, we've shared out a folder. I can come back over here to the DC, Control so MS1, now I've got a share, I can right click on this, I can map a network drive, maybe put that on P drive, reconnect, finish. So inside of Explorer and Computer, I see this but I can't right click it and format it. I, I can't right click it and do anything. And if I if I do Windows key X and go into disk management with a K, it's not here. It doesn't appear here. Because it's not true block level storage. It is a network based storage that is using the SMB protocol. NFS would also work um, for, for this kind of uh, storage. But iSCSI is different. It's, it's more similar to fiber channel uh, than it is to just a, a standard SMB share. So the first thing I have to be able to do is actually install the iSCSI. So I'll come in here and just click that little hyperlink and I'm going to check both of these boxes for iSCSI. I'm going to click next, next, and then uh, restart if necessary. Yes, and then in, go ahead and kick off the install. Now as this is, is going, let me just talk a little bit about the, uh, the history here is iSCSI has been around for a while. iSCSI target software has typically been part of the Windows storage server and was not something we gave away for free until about two years ago. Now we will allow you to do an out-of-band download and get 08R2 with the iSCSI target software but now it's built right in here to Windows. So that's that's kind of the biggest change is a the uh, the target is now part of Windows. It ships with it it's an installable feature or role. And we come back over here to refresh my screen. We now manage it in a little bit different place than uh, before. So now that we have the actual role installed, uh, what we want to do, this is the uh, target. So I'm going to create storage on this server and then I'm going to attach to it from another server as block level storage. So we need to create a target. Uh, so we're going to start off with creating an iSCSI virtual disk. This kicks off a new wizard. So we're going to just uh, let it pick this Contoso DC1 and select this volume. Um, it's going to ask me for a name. So let's just call this uh, uh, I, uh, ID1, iSCSI disk1. It's going to create this in a VHD format. I'm going to click that. I'm going to go ahead and let it create this. I've got 117 gigs free, but let's go ahead and create a 20 gig, uh, actually let's create a 24 gig drive. This is in honor of my wife's favorite NASCAR driver, Jeff Gordon. I'm going to create a new iSCSI target. So this target allows me to pick initiators that will attach to it. So we'll call this Contoso um, IT1, iSCSI target 1. And now I have to go and pick a way for these guys to connect. So the initiator ID, um, I'm going to use IP addresses. So I'm going to pick 10.1.0.5 and go ahead and click OK. And now the server at 10.1.0.5, which I believe is the IP address for MS1 if I got this right, uh, 10.1.0.5, as I can see, I'm skipping over here to MS1. 
and now moving back over to Contoso DC1. Say next. I'm not going to enable chap or reverse chap and then create. So this is the target side. I have created the target now. I can see the properties of this target uh, right here. It's not currently connected. This is Contoso uh, iSCSI target 1. Um, scrolling down just a little bit I can see the SCSI, iSCSI targets which I've created. Now to be able to connect to this I'm going to switch over to MS1 and this is the new way to get to the iSCSI initiator. So I'm going to go into tools and I'm going to go into iSCSI initiator. Now the, the, the strange thing about the iSCSI initiator is it doesn't work well in 800 by 600 which I'll show you in a second. What it's going to ask me here is hey the iSCSI service isn't currently running um, would you like me to turn on the iSCSI uh, service and let it run uh, at startup which you would want to do if you always want to persistently connect to that storage. So it's going to turn that service on, it's going to set it for automatic, and then it's going to bring up the initiator. Now you won't normally run into the problem that I'm looking at right now because you don't typically run your servers in 800 by 600 resolution. By default it won't even let you do that. Um, 1024 by 768 is the smallest amount. I'm going to really quickly turn that into a slightly uh, larger resolution so that I can come down here and actually see the OK button. So we're going to scroll back and forth a little bit. I realize that's going to make it just for a few seconds hard to, uh, for you to see, but 10.1.0.3. I'm going to click Quick Connect. It's going to see the iSCSI target that we created. I'm going to click Done. It's already right here. I can even go into Volumes and Devices and auto configure those. But the part that I couldn't get to in 800 by 600 is this OK button. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to switch my screen resolution back to 800 by 600. As you can see, it's hidden. So I hit Advanced Settings, Advanced Settings, List All Modes, 800 by 600. And again, you would probably not do this. I'm doing this for the fact that I'm filming this on YouTube and trying to make this uh, you know, a little easier for folks to see. And so there we go. Okay, so I have now attached to this, so I can go into Windows Key X and go into Disk Management. Now we get to see what actually attached at the block storage level. As you can see, I now have a 24 gig LUN that has been presented to me. Uh, I can right click, I can online this, making this obviously very much different than an SMB network share where I've mapped a drive. This is, this is uh, a whole different type of storage. Um, Alright, so we've, we've uh, got it online. I'm going to go ahead and initialize this drive and tell it, yes, I want to go ahead and do that for disk one. And I can uh, come through here and create a, a volume on this thing. So we'll, uh, maybe we'll put this on I for iSCSI and uh, call it 24 GBI CSI. Just don't really matter. Quick format. Um, I could use REFS, which we talked about in a previous episode. We're going to stick with NTFS in this case, and it's going to go ahead and format that drive for me and assign it to I. So this is true block level storage. It shows up in uh, my uh, computer right there. And I can go in and create a folder, folder one, create files. Hi there. And what I can do next is actually make this uh, attached to multiple targets. So I'm going to offline the, the, the disk for just a, a minute here. And I'm going to come back over to my iSCSI target on DC1. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to the properties for this target. As you can see the initiators I have at 10105. I can add additional initiators. So if I wanted to be able to attach to this from another server. I can just go 10.1.0.6. So now I have the ability to attach to this same 24 gig LUN from two different servers now. Now why would I do that? Well, what might come to your mind is failover clustering. This is a great way uh, to uh, put together some shared storage for failover clustering. We're not going to do that into a, a later episode where we actually look at this from a clustering standpoint, but we'll look at it from a local standpoint for right now. 
what uh, what I've done here is I've just created the ability for this is MS2. If it, just to refresh your, uh, if you're getting lost, we have three servers we're looking at. One of them is this. This is Contoso DC1. He's the iSCSI target. MS1, Contoso MS1, which has actually got the 24 gig LAN already configured. Now we're going over to Contoso MS2, who also does not have the iSCSI target started. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off the initiator just like before. I'm going to come through here and uh, let it start up in 10.1.0.3 and quick connect so we're, we're connected here now and uh, I can't click my OK button so actually I think I can I just need to hit enter and nope that didn't work so we'll go ahead and push this back up and tell you what I'll pause the video for a second since you've already seen that part there we go so I got my iSCSI uh, initiator connected to the iSCSI target. So Windows key X followed by K for disk management. In a previous episode we had a, a couple of storage spaces that were created on this. So we'll, we'll go jump through all of those guys and come down here to this 24 gig LUN. So I have a 24 gig drive. If I go ahead and online this disk, since I didn't do this inside of uh, iSCSI I do not currently have uh, the uh, iDrive, uh, not through iSCSI. Since I didn't do this through failover clustering, I didn't pick up the drive letter. If I had added this as storage, it would be the same drive on both nodes of a cluster, but we haven't built a cluster yet. We'll do that in another episode. Um, I'm just trying to make a point here, so I can change this over to i manually, though. There's no reason why I couldn't do that. And if you'll watch, if I go into iDrive, you'll see that the little folder and the little hi there that we created earlier is there. So this is truly shared storage. Now I did offline it on that other server a moment ago. Um, I could theoretically online it here and online it on both at the same time but eventually we're going to end up corrupting this drive. It's not a good idea to have uh, this online at the same time. You want something like failover cluster to do that sort of thing for you because uh, eventually you're going to uh, you're going to create a uh, corrupt uh, corruption in this drive and uh, huh, that's kind of interesting that file didn't show up over here let me uh, jump back out folder one <laughs> I may have already uh, caused some damage to this but uh, yeah okay so um, because I'm trying to bring this on at the same time Windows wasn't really built for a uh, shared uh, everything model, it's really more of a shared nothing model. It doesn't like to have two disks uh, online at the same time. When we add this into uh, a failover cluster later, that's that's a utility that's actually built to do that sort of thing. So um, bring those offline before I corrupt it and then just have it online in one location at a time. So. Uh, with a shared storage model, though, I have the capability to train this into a uh, witness disk. I have the ability to uh, uh, add this into a CSV, uh, cluster shared volume. I can add it to a resource as just some standard storage. Uh, but just the general idea that I wanted to get out here is just how to use the iSCSI uh, target and how it's changed from the initiator. The initiator piece, not much. Few things did change from the uh, iSCSI target piece on uh, Contoso DC1 here. Let's jump back over to him. Obviously the management interface is a little bit different. Uh, there's a few other changes which are definitely worth noting if you've been working with iSCSI for a while. Uh, one of which is we have full, uh, full support for 4K drives. Uh, there's PowerShell uh, that, that's been implemented here so you can manage these uh, targets from PowerShell. Uh, it now uses VSS, which it really didn't before, even though it may have appeared to you that it was doing that. Uh, the uh, VSS wasn't a part of that picture. Uh, it's fully SMI-S uh, compliant, which is an industry specification for uh, for people who write storage app uh, or build storage uh, type appliances. It's it's an industry standard. Um, it has its own best practices analyzer now. So when uh, I, I mentioned in an earlier episode that you can run BPA uh, tests against any server that you're managing. If I were to go into all servers and uh, 
No, I didn't kick the performance counters off on this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and kick those off. Um, slide down here to BPA. So now when I run BPA scans on this server, it'll actually include BPA results for the, uh, the iSCSI piece. So that that's that's a pretty neat improvement as well. It's also it's also its own service. So Windows Key, oops, that was not my intended button to push. Windows Key uh, R. I'm all over the place here. Services. Dot msc. So scroll down here to the bottom. So. Um, actually, it's not under the W, sorry, it's under the uh, Microsoft's M's. So if I go up to M in Microsoft iSCSI Software Target. So this is a restartable service now. Uh, so that's uh, that's very handy in that you don't have to bounce the entire service. The reason I got that confused is because it's actually called WinTarget. So SC query, actually that needs to be done from command prompt. So SC query uh, WinTarget. So that's its actual name. So uh, restartable, as you can see. Uh, so it's also been improved in that uh, failover cluster integration, which I'll talk about a little bit more when we get into the failover clustering uh, episodes of this uh, uh, of this series of what's new in Windows Server 2012. So, oops. So anyway, the. Uh, uh, there we go. We did get the BPA results in. Let's see if we saw anything come in about iSCSI. If, uh, if we didn't see anything, it's because we didn't actually trigger on any problems. But yeah, we didn't. Still, it's finished, and if there had been any problems that it, uh, it detected that were related to iSCSI, they would have come up in my BPA results, and then it was also lit up my dashboard, as we covered in the uh, previous episode where we were talking about our uh, uh, server manager and remote server management it would have lit up this area right here anyway anyway guys so this has been Chris with Microsoft as always um, thanks a lot for watching if you did find anything about this useful uh, or interesting please give it a quick like and the link below and feel free to subscribe to my channel my blog also is at 9z.com real easy to remember it's just the last number in the last letter Com. That's got links to my Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. So, again, thanks a ton for listening, and I'll see everyone in the next episode.